Well, thank you for joining us. I'm Brian Johnson, and I've got the honor of representing FinTech and some ideas and perspectives from PayPal. Um, I've got the, the pleasure of, of leading our threat research team, core technology and security oversight uh, organizations at PayPal. And today I uh, hitched a ride with uh, Dr. Uber Levigong and uh, offered to buy gas so we could come to the conference and, and speak with you about some thoughts that we have about quantum, what it means in our journey, and as an innovative company, um, what we intend to do uh, to explore the area as well. So I'll uh, open up if I can see the slide there. There we go. Okay, excellent. Um, so Dr. Beer Levengong, and I'll, I'll get into the, the intros and let him um, introduce himself as well, but he serves as our head of emerging threat research, uh, technology research, and he's an expert in cryptography, leading our team on quantum research. And uh, we've joined to give this viewpoint on what we have as business challenges across PayPal, some areas uh, that we suggest breaking down by qubits and, um, and thinking of ways that, uh, that, that quantum computing may help us. Uh, for those that are like me and are early into this journey, um, I've decided just to concede that if accepting quantum theory um, in, in this reality that we're in, uh, it must mean that we live in a, a parallel universe. If, if that's true, um, then the idea of having a doppelganger is kind of a, a fun thought. So, um, so as, we, as we dive into this world, uh, I think of, of quantum as a way of stretching our, our thought processes. And at the core of innovation, um, PayPal is a company that thrives on innovation and on large problems. And thankfully, we've got uh, really brilliant and brave people that love to apply innovation and uh, try to solve problems with innovative approaches. So brief on the history of PayPal for those unfamiliar with their background. Um, we have a 22 year history of innovation. In fact, as a leader in, in digital payments, we, uh, we were doing tokenization before it was cool and um, started up as uh, kind of the original FinTech startup and split off from eBay as a standalone company in 2015. So we are seven years as an independent platform and have grown now to serve more than 400 million active customers across over 200 markets. Um, the mission of PayPal, as we consider what it is that we do as a digital leader in our space, is to democratize financial services across a digital first economy. Um, we are reaching consumers and merchants to improve their financial well being across markets, including those underserved, with ubiquitous products, access to digital means of buying, selling, investing, lending, saving, and more. And our brand promise and what we really um, thrive to invest in as the, the staple of our, our promise is built on trust. We believe that fostering an open payment network um, built with partnerships across an ecosystem of academia, of industry, of commerce, of public uh, partnerships is the best way to promote an inclusive financial system uh, that encourages free trade and opportunities for people to participate and thrive in this digital first economy. Um, so with that, um, our, our commerce platform, we call the, the PayPal commerce platform, is our way of connecting and scaling businesses, simplifying the ways that we spend, um, the ways that we send money, the way we receive money. Um, and through that, we manage risk, uh, making decisions as we've got insight into the platform that's, that's connected um, and, and allows us to send money and receive money from virtually anyone anywhere through a connected platform. <clears throat> Our unique business model um, and, and the, the business of built on trust um, requires that we embed safe and secure ways of managing money into everything that we do. Every bit of data management, every product, every experience with industry leading financial risk management, 
Um, we have in the second quarter of this year securely processed more than $300 billion in total payment volume. And that allows us to operate in ways that meet and exceed market compliance requirements across uh, diverse and demanding regions in the world and to deliver safe financial products that our customers can trust. Um, offering those security capabilities embedded in the products that we build in every transaction being encrypted and doing that with a model that ensures uh, the trust of our consumers is the brand uh, philosophy and, and protection approach that we base everything off of that we build. The rare two-sided network that we offer with buyers and spenders on one side of the network and merchants and earners on the other side of the network is unique. It allows us to have a rare insight. Processing both sides of the transaction offers uh, access to better manage risk, to reduce fraud, um, to manage uh, funding instruments, uh, which makes the buying process even safer than other, ever. Also allows us to tailor products and deliver diverse and essential products to our consumers and merchants. Um, consumers that interact with our traditional products, uh, PayPal or Venmo, our Zoom global remittance products that offer person to person, even managing payments with our, our buy now and pay later solutions um, and, and expanding our offerings in the merchant space um, through our Zettle products, which are a point of sale, our recently acquired Charge Hound, Happy Returns. That brings even more value to merchants through new capabilities. Uh, the insight into that in managing uh, predictive and analytical decisions on prevention of account takeover, um, seeing merchant takeover behaviors, attempted spoof exits of funds, allows for this unique insight that we have though, to position ourselves better and better securing both sides of the transaction as well. Since trust is at the, the foundation of everything we do, we build collaboration and integrated uh, fraud management as a, a core capability. We take learnings from the two-sided network and we improve on those learnings through partnerships. Um, we do leverage analytics significantly. Of course, machine learning, um, artificial intelligence and in our fraud rules, and a significant amount of processing uh, for deep fraud analytics and prevention is at the core of what we build into our platform. And since trust is at the core of everything we do, we know that securing the front door, protecting the back door and building on a secure and strong foundation is uh, part of doing business. Trust, we believe is fueled by thoughtful and purposeful innovation as well. Since we have our DNA and roots in innovation as a company, um, we believe that trust at the core of everything we do can be blended by security and engagement of consumers through thoughtful and innovative approaches. That means creative uh, solutions to the consumers. So from foundational controls and deep analytics, we manage enormous data sets. Um, we tokenize and encrypt every transaction and we help buyers and sellers focus on, on what they do best. Protecting a lot of data like this though and sharing very little of it means that we have to analyze and process a lot on the back end, um, but we've never been shy of large scale problems whether we're stretching the limits of classical architectures, um, whether we're pushing the envelope of computing platforms and decision systems, we are thrilled to add quantum to our innovative portfolio and to take the innovative approaches to the industry in a way that we believe we're uniquely positioned with our payment platform to do so. Uh, Uber will take a bit deeper of a look now and discuss a bit about how our use cases and some of the common areas of focus will be for us in quantum computing. Hubert? Thanks, Brian. Um, so as Brian mentioned, my name is Hubert Le Gong Gong and I'm uh, the head of uh, the uh, emerging technology research uh, within the InfoSec organization of PayPal. And although we focus a lot on cryptography, one of the uh, uh, truly emerging technology out there is, is quantum computing, and we, we spend quite a bit of time looking at how we can harness com quantum computing uh, to do uh, good things, and also how we can quantum proof uh, the company. Um, so one of the main reasons PayPal has been successful in our fraud risk assessment, uh, that is the ability to separate the fraudsters uh, from what, whom we want to block. 
uh, from the users whose transaction should not be declined is to measure our progress. And we use a metric called uh, GUDR, which is, stands for Good User Decline Rate, which tells us the ratio of unjustified decline. So as you can see on the chart here, um, PayPal has managed to substantially reduce the GUDR, and that obviously directly translates into decrease uh, in lost revenue. The backbone for this is our risk assessment, and uh, the big chunk of the risk assessment is done using deep learning and graph intelligence. Beside the challenges of defining a deep learning framework um, that supports all the different deep learning inference solutions that we use, like TensorFlow and other um, REST, GRPC, and others, um, we also constantly look for more scale, which is really a big, uh, a big uh, topic for us. At a high level, the deep learning model is uh, made of two important steps. The first one is going to be the training phase where we use, uh, which is used to build intelligence with the data by training the neural network uh, to find the best parameters or weights uh, fitting the label training data. And the second phase is the inferencing phase where the intelligence that we develop, um, that is the parameters, um, is used to classify or process the unlabeled data at the customer uh, interaction point. So from a complexity standpoint, both the training and the inference phases uh, share some computation like the forward pass calculation where the weights are applied to the incoming training data. Um, the training phase though, involves iterative learning to improve the fraud risk. So these two steps, the forward pass and the backward one, which is using the training phase, effectively consist in a multitude of matrix multiplications, um, which is computationally intensive, uh, especially in a classic setting. So the number of such metrics operation is particularly high for the training phase compared to the inference one. And that is where the potential benefit for quantum computing comes in speeding up the process. So our objective is um, to investigate uh, this quantum computing opportunity to see whether it can help to improve our training phase and as a result, drive our good user decline rate further down. This obviously represents a potentially massive impact um, on our business. As we all know, not all problems are created equals, though, when it comes to a potential quantum speedup. Um, so far, only specific categories of problems may benefit from being applied uh, to quantum computing. And one problem category is called search and optimization, uh, and which covers unstructured search problems. So the most well-known uh, algorithm is Grover's algorithm, obviously, which can uh, provide a quadratic speedup uh, for search of uh, things like symmetric uh, cryptography keys. But this category also includes um, adiabatic optimization problems. And one application of such problem is feature selection, uh, which as mentioned in our previous slide is one of the prime relevance to uh, uh, PayPal's fraud detection mechanisms. Although the runtime quantum speed up for a, a adiabatic optimization compared to classical algorithm is, is still a bit unknown, the prospects made it worth enough for us to investigate. Moreover, adiabatic optimization is anticipated to scale up rapidly and quantum advantage uh, was already shown in a previous um, research around chemistry simu uh, simulation. So in this slide, we present an idea of what feature selection consists in and um, the type of scale we deal with at PayPal. So on the table you have here, um, typically a fraud detection data set will include millions of transactions, which are the rows that you see here. Um, and each of those transactions will include thousands of features, which are the columns that are represented here. Some of those features may be real, like the customer IP address or information like that, and others may be actually engineering by our um, machine learning specialists. Based on the huge data set, this, the goal is to determine whether a row should be flagged as a fraud or not. So at a high level, the feature selection problem consists in identifying the top feature of a given data set which of those subset from the thousands of features that we see here uh, will work best. And so in other words, the feature selection is really about identifying the principal components, which are the most prominent in helping us predicting a particular aspect of the data, which in this case is going to determine whether a given transaction is likely fraudulent or, or not. So feature selection has multiple advantages, uh, such as reducing the computation time for further data processing, and also potentially providing more accurate prediction for us by removing redundant features from the data set. Given the scale of the data sets we're talking about here, uh, which include up to 10,000 features, feature selection is really a very complicated task for us and one we spend a lot of time working on. So ideally, we would want to be able to explore all the possible permutation, but obviously it's totally impossible with classical method and so many um, 
so many features. So one of the main forays in quantum computing for us revolves around the question of whether we can achieve both better quality as well as faster, or at least as fast, feature selection uh, using quantum computing. So as mentioned in the previous slide, adiabatic optimization represents a, a category of problems where um, there is a possible quantum advantage. This is where our collaboration with D-Wave uh, really comes uh, given the amount of knowledge and experience D-Wave has in this domain, right? So with this partnership, we really combine PayPal's huge experience and knowledge in machine learning, as well as deep learning feature selection problems, along with D-Wave's knowledge and experience when it comes to solving adiabatic quantum optimization problems uh, using quantum manually. One possible approach um, to the feature selection problem and possibly one that scales to the desired level for PayPal is to frame the feature selection using a quadratic and constrained binary op optimization problem uh, called Cubo, and then look for global minimal solutions using quantum annealing. So our collaboration with D-Wave is really has centered around the application of Cubo-based quantum models for feature selection. This is possibly one of the first use cases where we could reach quantum advantage for an actual real value use case, uh, i.e. here fraud detection. So the overall approach we've taken is to compare several feature selection models um, that are friendly uh, to quantum annealing with classical ones. To do so, we developed new Cubo models uh, for feature selection. Those are based on existing ones uh, that are presented on the left side of the slide here. Um, by either combining existing Cubo models into a hybrid Cubo or incorporating multivariate effects. Um, experiments are still ongoing at this stage, um, but we believe that they're promising um, and Cubo-based quantum models with, have performance that is likely to be comparable and hopefully even better uh, than classical methods. Um, so to quickly go over the overall methodology that we're using with D-Wave here, uh, we have worked out uh, a three-phase phases plan. The first one is model development, selecting the Cubo and classic models, as I mentioned earlier, and also develop the evaluation framework to compare all these models. Uh, that includes several classifiers like logistic regressions or random forests and neural networks, um, as well as accuracy score and log loss when it comes to benchmark metrics. Um, and then the second phase is really selecting the appropriate data sets. That's, that's actually quite important. We're starting with a small data set, and then we're ramping up to a very large data set that will contain many, many samples, um, and as well as many, many features, you know, 500 to 1,000 features. And therefore, it will allow us to reach practical levels from a PayPal fraud detection standpoint. And then from an assessment, um, we're evaluating the performance of each model and comparing uh, the results. So these are two illustrations of some of the measurements that we have done so far. Um, on the left side, we compare quantum and classic uh, classical feature selection methods uh, with accuracy as a baseline metric. The results here indicate that the quantum models um, come within the same ballpark in prediction when compared to the classical methods, which are in uh, green and red here. And then on the right side, um, we present an interesting view of different feature subsets uh, chosen by the quantum and classical methods and their mean uh, accuracy values. So as mentioned before, this is collaboration is still ongoing and we're still in the process of refining our quantum models. Um, but later down the road, uh, we plan on testing even bigger data sets, which will help us further assess the practicality of these models uh, and the overall approach. And finally, um, this research and development is really an illustration of the type of quantum journey that has been talked about uh, during the pre previous presentations. Um, and it's really about finding out what exactly constitute the source of quantum advantage here, uh, as well as for us understanding how optimization techniques uh, can be brought out using quantum annealing. So as a conclusion, uh, as Brian described, PayPal is, has really a strong culture of innovation. Um, the customer is obviously at the heart of research and innovation in PayPal. We really strive to create uh, amazing experiences and to leverage standard. And, and the collaboration we have with D-Wave is a good example of the type of ecosystem partnership that we, uh, we strive for. When it comes to quantum at PayPal, the Cubo-based model uh, that we, we are exploring show early promises. There's still a lot more research needed, both in terms of scalability as, uh, as well as quality. And um, I think it's safe to say that PayPal is really looking at many other quantum topics. Um, this is only really just the beginning of our quantum journey here. Thank you.
Well, thank you, Brian Hubert. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Hi, nice to see you both. Um, welcome to Qubits. Thank you for a really great talk. We are so proud to be partnered with PayPal on your journey together. I really, uh, it's, it's quite an honor. So thanks for letting me ask you a couple of questions. I hope that's okay to, to pay off our Thank real you. conversations. Um, the first one, and I'll let, you, I'll let you both thumb wrestle about who's gonna answer it, but in your journey working with quantum computing, how did you know which problems were gonna be most suitable? And what process did you use to, to help you identify what the right problems were? I think I'll take that one, Brian, if you don't mind. Um, so our, our approach to quantum computing has really always been all encompass, encompassing, right? And we did our best to consider all possible applications to quantum computing. Mm -hmm. Having said that, we obviously cannot do it all at once. Um, and there are several parameters that can be used to prioritize specific projects and focus uh, resources and energy on those. Um, as such, we use well-established classification of algorithms, as I was just uh, talking a little bit during the presentation, where quantum computers can actually bring advantage and map those to areas or domain where we have heavy use of such algorithms within PayPal. Yeah. That heat map, so to speak, uh, can then be prioritized based on the potential business impact, uh, as well as perceived maturity of the quantum solutions. Um, so as we, as we just presented, deep learning and particular feature selection when it comes to fraud detection is one of those problems where quantum computing can potentially give us some big benefit and, and big uh, actually financial improvement potentially in an area that PayPal um, relies heavily upon. That's great. Brian, anything you want to add to that or should we go to the next question? I think contextualizing with business challenges, starting with knowing what your business problems are at scale and, and looking ahead into the five year plus future to say what what areas of innovation are gonna, gonna have the biggest payoff. As Amir said, that's that's a good, you know, a good mind mapping exercise for for businesses to think through where to start. That's great. That's great. And I know businesses are really looking to you all as pioneers to, to give them your, your tips and tricks. So we've got another question. Um, where do both of you, and I'm going to ask Brian to answer first, and then Uber, I'll have you follow up. Where do both of you see quantum computing going in the next couple of years? Um, you know, from, from my perspective, I'm really looking for it to stretch the boundaries of thinking and, uh, and, and deliver some proofs. Uh, I think that we've, we've got a lot of comparisons, a lot of data to capture. And, and as, as Zubair mentioned, there's a lot of um, classical verse comparison, but there's also, I think, just a lot of, of proofs of, of quantum annealing that we just want to get more data out of. So I think there's going to be a tremendous amount of learnings that as an industry, we need to collaborate more on. And the more information and, and sharing of results we can do in collaborative formats, um, that'll help us drive decisions on what use cases and, and what investments make the most sense. So I see out of the future of it a, a tremendous amount of discovery, learning, and investigative effort put into uh, this early stage of research. Uh, that's great. Uber, what do you think? What, what's yeah, going to happen next in quantum? <laughs> um, if only I knew. Um, but conceptually, <laughs> Look into your crystal ball. <laughs> yes, I think conceptually there are three parallel tracks, right? Um, and each of them are receiving huge amounts of of of, fo of focus and and funding from industry and academia. So on the quantum computer side, we're still in this NISC era um, where the physicists and hardware researchers are hard at work to improve the scalability of current quantum computers. And there are vastly different approaches, as we know, that are being studied, some facing more or less uh, big challenges around error mitigations. So it's hard to know where we'll be in a few years for sure, but the hope is that we'll see substantial increase in what I would call usable qubits, really. That is the number of qubits that we actually can put to work to uh, compute concrete problems like the one we described. And then the second track is one where we hope to see vast improvements, and that's about quantum aware software capabilities and, uh, and approaches. And that's an area where companies like PayPal and, and Eon before through collaborations like the ones we have ongoing with D-Wave can help develop a more mature process of porting known classic problems and softwares to the quantum uh, era. Yeah. And there's a lot to be learned obviously in the process, as I mentioned, a lot of innovation is, is happening there. Um, along those lines, we expect significant improvement to the quantum uh, for quantum simulators, which are really in, indispensable and very important for us to help develop uh, the work done there. And, and the third component is really, which is really essential, is the evolution of quantum computing offering, um, in particular as a cloud-based platform, right? It's quite clear that within a few uh, years, 
almost no companies will acquire a quantum computing, <laughs> a quantum computers um, for themselves at least. And so for the foreseeable future, the main access to quantum computing is going to be through cloud-based offering uh, like you guys have. And so developing better patterns of integration as well as strong security model uh, are essential objectives. And I think there's going to be a lot of progress made there. Well, I think I heard some feature requests in there. So for the D-Wave team, listen to Bear, I think you've got some good uh, good product feedback and things that he'd like to see. So that's awesome. Um, okay, we have time for a couple more questions. What advice do you have for other companies who haven't started exploring quantum yet? Uber, I'll have you go first. And Brian, I'd love to hear from you, from, from you as well, since you both have different perspectives. So I think there's still um, plenty of time to embark on, on, on the quantum computing and, and benefit from it. Um, one of the main aspects, I think, is to not try to do it all at once, um, but rather try to take a very methodical approach, like you know, that, like the type of things we did, which is really look at the kind of quantum algorithms where you can get a quantum speed up potentially, and then map that to your own problems and determine based on that, determine where you want to put the emphasis and start really studying uh, to, to get there. Um, but there's also, obviously, this is for harnessing quantum computer for good things. Uh, from a quantum proving aspect, I think it's, uh, it, it's really important to get started as soon as possible. Thank you, Bear. Brian, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I look at a lot of the cultural adaptation that companies are going to have to, to go through, and that's internal learnings and socialization, um, you know, kind of the internal marketing of, of innovation and, and investments in companies. And I I look at it as now um, is, is the best time for companies to start that internal socialization. And that's finding key stakeholders, people who have a, an interest, um, you know, a curiosity, a natural intellectual curiosity around emerging trends and innovative techniques, um, stretching the envelope on solutions. And, and then I think there's other aspects of stakeholdering in companies that should start now. Um, areas when we look at uh, what does post-quantum uh, cryptography look like? Um, what are the areas of, of working with ecosystem partners and protecting and securing uh, the, the internet as a whole, but, but specifically products that companies need to be a little more on the defensive about as well. And I think there's a lot of areas where we can look at it as pragmatists and start to consider um, the, the near future implications, uh, but then also as strategists and, and kind of in the futurist mode of thinking about the uh, cultural adaptation and adoption of new technologies and start those socialization and internal stakeholdering efforts now, and, and do that by picking some specific pilot examples and prove one that may fail. That's okay. Like Let's learn from initial failures and proofs that, that will um, shake out the boundaries in healthy ways. I think those are, those are great ways to get started and get involved. Now, I actually think that the point about the human capital and the need to make cultural and internal changes both from process to how we're beginning to think about these may be as big as the technology challenges and opportunities that we have ahead of us. So I think that's a really important point. And I think also, again, why we're all here, because, you know, we have best practices. There are things that you've done that have worked and d things that you've done that probably haven't worked. And there's a lot of opportunity to share that. And so um, I would ask the, the the collective group, if there are questions or there are points that you, things that you can share, use the chat, share some of your best practices around some of that human capital issues, because I do think that that's a key area that we don't spend enough time talking about. So, so that's terrific. So I have 53 seconds left. Is there anything else PayPal would like to say about quantum and your quantum journey before we, uh, before we wrap up your section and, and move to the, the individual, um, uh, tracks. Oh, I'll, ju I'll, ju I'll just say that it's it's a very exciting uh, era. I think we we are we are to some extent privileged. I would say uh, to yeah. live in an era where we can truly have the opportunity to work on a transition from classic computers, which have been around since you know way before any of us, and and move on to a, a, an era where quantum computers are going to be a, you know allow us to do things that we have not thought about, solve problems uh, and address issues that, you know, were seem seemingly un unattainable not too long ago. That is so exciting. Well, thank you both for joining us. Thanks for being here at Qubits. We're going to move to the other tracks. Have a wonderful day, both of you. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Hubert. Thanks, all.